Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at last click attribution and get started on first click attribution. Now, just as a reminder, last click attribution uh, kind of goes as follows. And this is not last non-direct click. That's a more nuanced algorithm that you commonly find in Google Analytics. We're going to do solely last click attribution. So if you're new to this uh, marketing analytics game, here's how it works. Imagine you have a user in session one, do, they do not order. In session two, they do not order. And then finally in session three, they purchase. Whatever money they spent gets completely credited to the session in which they purchased. So one thing should stand out at you. The only session we care about is the session where they purchased. So we can just forget about everything else and focus on that. Now you might be wondering, how are we gonna get revenue? Where is revenue coming from? And let's, uh, let's address that. So here's our starter query. We have our user, we have a purchase event, session ID, a source medium. Where the heck is the, uh, is the revenue? And I, I wanna just show you where it is so it's not mysterious. So if, if we add event params and we rerun the query, whoops, I think I ran 100 on its own. I double clicked that and ran that. That's not gonna return anything. So where, where is revenue, right? So if you look in our event params, we have, we have some things here for uh, this purchase event. So we have the session number, the campaign, all that. We're looking for something called value. It, it doesn't always have it. So, you know, I don't know who implemented this or what's going on, but um, yeah, value, okay. And you see, it, it's null. The string value is null. The integer value is null. The float value is null, but the double value is 2464. So let's look at another one. Let's keep trying to find value. Okay, here's a uh, 2464. Notice how it's not in every purchase event. And again, I don't know why. Here's another one. Okay, in this case, it has an integer value. So one thing we need to do is not only do we need to um, grab what is at the key of value from event params, but we need to sort of look across the integer value, the float value, and the, the double value. We need to get all those things. Now for any given event, purchase event at the value key, well, that's actually tax. We're not gonna worry about tax, but uh, anytime we go get the data at the value key, we're gonna have to look across those three fields and, and it's gonna be in either one. It's gonna be either the in value, the float value, or the double value. So I'm just gonna copy down this and I'm gonna say where, where the key, the event params key is equal to value and what we need to do here is kind of not just get the in value. We need the in float and the double. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the coles keyword, which sort of says, look here. And if you don't find that, uh, look here. And if, if that's null, look here. And I'll call that as a purchase revenue. So we'll run that looking across those um, fields where the key is equal to value. And let's take a look. So we have purchase revenue 27. Uh, this is null, right? Because, well, they, they didn't send any data. Um, so we're gonna have to contend with that. Purchase revenue null, a lot of nulls, $80. And wh why is it null? I mean, it's obfuscated data. It, it's a sample data set to learn on, right? Uh, so just be aware that we did the best we could uh, to get these values, but they're, they're, it's not all perfect, right? So, all right, great. So now we have a table. We have the user ID, the event name, the event params. I'm just going to delete those because they're not really relevant to our query. We're trying to figure out which source medium should get the, uh, the credit for transactions and, and purchase revenue. So Let's rerun our query just to get a fresh view of, of the table that we're generating thus far. 
and okay, we have one row per user in session. These are all transactions. So, I mean, what do we have to do? It's, it's actually pretty easy. We just, um, we just need to select the source medium and we need to sum the number of rows or do a count star and then sum the purchase revenue. So, and of course this is just, you know, for, for looking at data ordered by Rand Limo 100. Uh, and, and just as a note, uh, if you're following and you have a different table suffix right now, I'm going from, uh, January 1st, uh, sorry, January 25th through, um, October 31st. Wait, did I get that right? Sometimes I just need to do that. Yeah. So this is a, um, sometimes that helps me think about what date I'm actually doing here. Yeah. So it's like a week. So I think, you know, the drill, we can just say select source medium. We could do account as, uh, as purchases. And we can also do a, um, a sum of purchase revenue, a sales. And what are we going to select that from? We're going to select it from this entire thing. Just use a nice little, uh, unnamed sub query and we need to group by one and I'll order by two, the number of purchases descending and we'll have our last click attribution model. And here we go. Direct none, Google organic, uh, merchandise store, some data has been removed and that's how it all breaks out. We have sales, we have purchases. Okay. So what I want you to start thinking about is, you know, how do you build the, the first click attribution model? How, how would you, how do you go about doing that? And if we sort of draw it out here, uh, it would be this, this is what it would be, right? It would be if, if you have three touches before the purchase, right? Zero, uh, well, let's just say zero of three. Um, the credit all goes to, to this one. It's the first touch. Now I want you to ignore something for the sake of simplicity, ignore cases where a user has multiple transactions in the date range. So here's an illustration of, of why that matters. Let's say that these are sessions, users and, and source mediums, right? Let's just look at this particular user. Let me, let me draw here. So I, I purchased in both cases, right? So maybe in this case, my, my first touch session would be this, but what, what about this case? Would the first touch session be, would it be itself because we don't have any prior sessions without transactions or, or would it, would it just be this again? And I would say, I would focus on, on don't get, you know, when you're implementing this first click logic, always just map it back to the earliest session for that user ID, right? Even if, if there, there are some kind of conflict here with multiple purchases or multiple transactions in, in the window over the user ID, just always map it back, uh, to the first one. Let me exit the drawing here. So let me expand this code so you can see everything and try that out. We'll come back and solve first click attribution. Thanks a lot, y'all. Keep it up.